Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy Viewers. This is a talk video, the first talk video of the new year. And in this one, we are covering the latest chase that is arriving Friday. And it adds import to Zori and the Resistance fleet. And the comeuppance looks to be the ship that will finally unlock the Resistance fleet's potential as a Leviathan counter that I have long theorized here. We'll be covering the developer insights, the tips, break down the kit and do our analysis. And then we're gonna look at the Resistance fleet in a little bit more detail because there's a few mechanics that I want to be pointing out. The comeuppance joins the game as a resistance support ship with scoundrel and smuggler synergy with the attributes portion. What CG is bringing up here is assists allies with deflector shield. That's going to be with the reinforcement. Out of turn attacks inflict target lock and reinforcement AOE inflicts expose. With the tips portion. We're going to want to use this fleet as a reinforcement and we're going to take advantage of Expose to maximize the fleet efficacy. And all of that will be getting into some good detail. Okay, so I think I've got this one pretty figured out. The basic ability IX-4B laser cannons. This deals physical damage to the target. If the comeuppance has dramatic entrance, all resistance allies gain crit chance up and crit damage up. We'll touch on dramatic entrance with the reinforcement ability. Target lock, gain dramatic entrance for one turn. So the mechanic here to focus on is you must target an enemy that has target lock because that triggers the dramatic entrance and has a number of downstream effects along with that AOE buff gain for your allies. The first and only special want to come with me. This is a cooldown of three. Expose the target, unavailable and unresistable. All resistance allies gain foresight. If the target enemy already had Expose, call resistance allies for a mass assist and all resistance allies recover 25% protection. Now this is a powerful four part ability with a short cooldown if the enemy already had exposed, which considering there's only two abilities here, that's going to be important. This has the potential for big damage with the mass assist plus the infliction of expose for the offense and added survivability with recovery as well as granting foresight. And we need to be managing this because this is the primary ability that will be inflicting exposed for the resistance fleet. Holdo's Radis can inflict Expose with its basic ability, but that will be used so infrequently that effectively the comeuppance special is what we need to be relying on for inflicting Expose on the enemy fleet. The first unique ability, Spice Running Tactics. The comeuppance has plus 30% max health and max protection, which hopefully means it's a fairly survivable ship. Resistance allies gain 10% turn meter whenever they use a basic ability on an exposed enemy. So we start seeing some of that exposed synergy. And whenever resistance allies gain bonus turn meter while they have less than 100% turn meter, they gain protection up, which is 20% stacking for one turn. Now, this unique supports itself. It adds turn meter gain when using a basic on an exposed enemy and then grants that stacking protection up with the same mechanic. But I would caution against thinking this is going to be a major mechanic at all times since I'm starting to have concerns about how much exposed will actually be on the enemy fleet and it will likely be crucial to actively manage the enemies with exposed until the comeuppance can attack it with its special. Other Otherwise, you can't get the assists and you can't continue to inflict expose. Keep all this in mind because we're going to return to this when we break down the reinforcement ability. The second unique ability, I think you're okay. The comeuppance has plus 100% counter chance and considering that if the enemy has target lock when it attacks the comeuppance, it kind of reduces the incentive to actually go after the comeuppance. So that is a nice aspect there. Whenever another resistance ally with deflector shield uses a special ability, the comeuppance is going to assist. And due to the mechanics of the comeuppance basic, this means target an enemy that has target lock so that when the comeuppance assists, it gains dramatic entrance and grants all allies crit chance and crit damage up. 
Whenever a resistance ally attacks out of turn, they gain potency up and inflict target enemy with target lock if they didn't already have it. The potency up will be primarily for ensuring that the target lock and expose are inflicted. So this mechanic is going to be important to managing the other mechanics of the comeuppance and the resistance fleet. Now for the reinforcement ability itself. AoE remove dramatic entrance from all allies, then all resistance allies gain dramatic entrance for two turns. Now see, this portion here, maybe I'm missing something, but the way I'm understanding this, as written, this only half occurs. Since without comeuppance on the board, there should not be any existing dramatic entrance on the field, so it's probably verbiage in case of any future ship or capital ship that may add dramatic entrance synergy. So in effect, the first thing the reinforcement ability does is an AoE all allies gain dramatic entrance, and the most important part of that to understand is it appears to be the only way for allies to initially gain dramatic entrance. Otherwise, the mechanics in gaining dramatic entrance are only for the comeuppance on the basic ability when targeting an enemy with target lock. However, if the allies already have dramatic entrance, they can keep it if they take out an enemy. Otherwise, once it's gone on allies, it's gone on the allies. So as the comeuppance enters the fray, there will be potentially be two turns for the resistance allies to, in effect, be supercharged while having dramatic entrance and doing some big damage. In addition, the second aspect of the reinforcement ability, all enemies are exposed for one turn. This is unavailable and unresistible. This is the only AoE exposed for the resistance fleet. The comeuppance special is only targeted, and the Radis itself can inflict expose on its basic when a resistance ally assists, which means that if you use the comeuppance as a starter, you'll have to actively avoid the exposed enemy until the comeuppance can attack it with its special. Otherwise, you can't get the mass assist. And if you're stuck behind a taunt, that's a problem. It may mean rarely having an expose to target when the comeuppance has its special ability ready. But when you use it as a reinforcement, what we in effect get is a several turn moment where the resistance fleet can target the exposes, gain turn meter and stacking protection from the unique, and set up the comeuppance to quickly be able to use its special while all allies still have dramatic entrance and thus perform a huge mass assist on that turn, which can otherwise take out a tank or go after another high priority enemy. And finally, this ability will reduce the cooldowns of all resistance allies with deflector shield. So this has two functions. One, it ensures that when the comeuppance reinforces, it potentially sets your fleet up to make sure the MG100 can dispel the taunt that an enemy tank may be carrying. And secondarily, and this part here may be the most valuable aspect of the reinforcement ability, since using the specials while having deflector shield is how to reduce the cooldown on Holdo's Radis Ultimate. It means getting to the ultimate ability faster. So we need to ensure that when we bring out the comeuppance as a reinforcement, deflector shield is on all of the ships. So that means either doing it very early or making sure that we use the special from the Radis to grant deflector shield onto all the ships the turn before we bring in the reinforcement. I want to do a quick refresher on some of the mechanics of the resistance fleet. Also, I encourage you to check out a video I'll throw in at the end of the video that was theorizing of why I thought the Radis was going to be a Leviathan counter even prior to the Leviathan kit getting announced, just based on the Sith fleet mechanics. Now, with the Radis, the basic ability here already stated, this is going to be one of the two ways that we can inflict expose with the ships themselves. This ability here, Outlast, this will grant a deflector shield, so we need to make sure that we either reinforce quickly or we need to use this ability prior to reinforcing so that when the comeuppance enters, we get that cooldown mechanic. Now, with the ultimate ability, this is 
only reduced when a resistance ally with foresight uses a special ability. That's why deflector shield is so important because deflector shield grants foresight to a ship that has it when it takes its turn. Also keep in mind that when the comeuppance reinforces, it will also be granting everyone foresight and reducing the cooldowns so that a special ability can be used. So there's a moment there that even if deflector shield was expired, foresight will be brought in from the comeuppance reinforcing. Now with the MG100, there's a couple things here. One, the basic ability it does inflict target lock. So pairing that with the potency up can help ensure that the MG100 will be placing target locks so that when the comeuppance assists, then it will be getting dramatic entrance. The next ability here is begin drop sequence. This is the only ability that has a dispel on the resistance fleet and it has a cooldown of three. So this might be an ability that we either want to save or we need to use early enough in the battle so that when the comeuppance enters, this ability is off of cooldown so that we can dispel a taunt. Like if we're going up against the Leviathan, we want to make sure that we are not stuck behind the Sith Bomber or that we can take out the Sith Bomber quickly. And this ability here is going to allow us to do it. Which means, and this is important for a player like me who has these gear 12 pilots, that these pilots are very important to increase their gear and go to relics. Because for me, at gear 12, the MG100 is probably not going to last until when the comeuppance enters as a reinforcement. It means that Ray players are going to have an advantage and they may even want to be considering increasing the relic levels on Trooper and Rose so that this ship can be maintained on the field for when the comeuppance enters. Otherwise, we'll be stuck into a position where we need to rely on the dramatic entrance and all that assisting damage to burn through a taunting tank. Otherwise, all those exposes that are on other enemies, you just can't get to them because there's no way to ignore taunt with this fleet. Ray's Falcon also can inflict more target lock. There's also additional target lock synergy, but some of these other mechanics, these are gonna be a little bit less important. Uh, the MG100 and the Raditz itself have the major mechanics to highlight and pay attention to, but there are other mechanics with the rest of the ships that are gonna be critical to countering the Leviathan if that does prove to be the case. And just check out that other video for though a breakdown on those mechanics. And that video will be right here. We will wrap it up. We are still churning out a bunch of Grand Arena videos. And as we get a little bit deeper into things, we'll start dropping out other videos on other topics. I'm sure people are getting a little bit tired of me getting caught up on some of these Grand Arena videos as we transition into the new year. Thank you for watching. Be excellent to each other, everybody. This is still Plays Galaxy of Heroes.